we glorify you O oh God in Jesus name let's spend a few minutes teaching the word and then we'll pray we are a people who embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit in his entirety but we are also a people who have profound honor and value for the word of God Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 Acts 20 32 and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace the Bible says which is able to number one build you up it is only the word of God that is able to build men number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the Bible says and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation hallelujah when we invest time learning the word we are learning the modus operandi of the kingdom we are allowing the mind of Christ Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you permit this mind this thinking this ideology to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the Word of God gives us enlightenment spiritual illumination access to light and John 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not he said that was the true light that lighted every man hallelujah he came to bear witness to the light John 1 verse 6 there was a man the Bible says sent from God whose name was John next verse says the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe verse 8 he says he was not that light he was only sent to bear witness of that light 9 says that was the true light Jesus by the ministry of the Holy Spirit the light that lighted every man his ministry is for every man not just church people every man are we blessed now let me just give a little theological background theologically speaking there are certain words you've heard me say it again that there are certain words that even though used in the Christian faith are not found verbatim in scripture there are a number of them we use them as a lingua franca among believers but then these are not words that are captured in scripture one of it is the word rapture you will not find any word rapture in scripture are we together but then we know that there is an event that we call rapture praise the name of the lord another word is trinity you never find oh by the way let's bless azaria family they are following right now let's give them a big 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 god bless you <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the word trinity because before I begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, I need to clear the air over an issue that has remained for very long in the body of Christ. The confusion as to the triune nature of God. It's been a confusion among believers, among Bible scholars. There have been different schools of thought as to the triune nature of God. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And so many people have used that scripture to negate the existence of divinity in a tripartite form are we together it seems as though there are three gods the father the son and the holy spirit which one do we worship which one do we serve and it's brought a lot of confusion so when we teach about the ministry of the holy spirit there is further confusion again if this is not cleared and the reason is because the holy spirit happens to be largely invisible and there has been no direct revelation of his form in terms of his human form 
are we together but then let me just take two or three minutes to let you know that the concept of the triune nature of god is a fact the bible does tell us that even though god is the god of the universe his operation is tripartite the father the son and the holy spirit this is a foundational understanding to the christian faith if you do not believe this something might be wrong with your conviction are we together now that it is true that the father the son and the holy spirit we call it the godhead the word one god does not mean a singular it means unity hear ye o israel the lord our god is one lord united is that true genesis chapter one let's go to the book of the beginnings now theologically speaking every time you want to examine a body of spiritual truth a subject um you begin your study from there's what we call the law of first mention so you go to scripture and then the context with which that word was mentioned first is the context that guides you as you study that subject are we together so we go to the book of beginnings genesis chapter one in the beginning the bible says god god created the heaven and the earth verse two it says and the earth was without form and void now you would notice um let me not assume genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 it seems like a contrast because according to the character of god's creation everything he creates is good is that true now we see that god created the heavens and the earth verse 1 and then verse 2 now says the earth was without form again so what was god creating the earth was without form void darkness was upon the face of the deep the hebrew expression tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos and then the bible says please go to verse 2 just keep it there verse 2 it says and the spirit of god so we see that the first the first dimension of the godhead revealed in scripture was the holy spirit and he was called the spirit of god he moved upon the face of the waters just for knowledge genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of lucifer right genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 did not just happen within a short time span now you know that the bible is a piece of literature and it was written uh, with with honor to all the principles of literature meaning that it was written largely in summary are we together now you would think that it just happened again and again there were prophets in the bible that never met themselves they were hundreds of years apart but when you read them because you are reading a summary it looked like one just died and next week the other one started no hallelujah so lucifer was judged in genesis 1 verse 1 god created the heavens and the earth and then the gap between genesis 1 verse 1 1 verse 2 in theology is called the gap theory it's an attempt to explain what happened the hundreds of years apart that would have led to this chaos and confusion because genesis 1 verse 2 is not an expression of the character of god outside of the influence of another deity the earth being dark and formless was as a result of the judgment so what you call creation story in genesis chapter 1 is actually a re-creation story that was not the original creation are we together job in the height of his frustration when you read chapter 38 i'm just giving us an introduction just a background in chapter 38 job was so frustrated because of his predicament the bible says he summoned god and god came to him in a whirlwind and said who is this that dark not counsel without knowledge he says guard your loins as a man and i would demand of you answer me question one where was thou when i laid the foundations of the earth so there was a day the foundations of the earth was laid we don't see that in the genesis account are we together now it says declare if thou hast understanding verse 2 it says who had laid the measure thereof if thou knowest in fact let me tell you this for your knowledge i hope you realize that what we call the garden of eden 
the garden of the Lord that we call Eden where Adam and Eve the east side of the Eden was where they were kept the first occupant according to the revelation that scripture brings in the garden of Eden was Lucifer himself thou was in Eden the garden of the Lord you now see the vendetta between Lucifer and man because Lucifer was an expression of God to the then creation the word eternity means the formation of infinite dispensations we are not the first of the human race no we are just a little above 6,000 years science show us the existence of a lot of humanoid species before us there's nothing um, there's nothing false about it Adam hmm, understand what I'm saying now I'm teaching koinonia and then those who are interested in learning through this platform i know why i'm saying what i just said now adam is not the first man no adam was the first man created in the image there was a dispensation where lucifer was head over them he was a representation what adam what god brought man to do there was a dispensation that lucifer was mandated to be the revelation of god to them and on account of that assignment he's making angels cherubs were not made from dust they were made from quantized light light the depreciation of their body but the degree to which the light upon them excels that is the degree to which they have visited the throne room because every time they meet him is a law to both human and angels that as we behold him we are changed are we together now yes so lucifer it was on the strength of his build up the dexterity of his making that pride came upon him are we together yes there's no time to begin to talk about lucifer lucifer was that cherub the bible says that covereth he was in eden the garden of the lord the entire object of his making was it was it was an artistry of god and his assignment was the custodian the light bearer revelations are stored as light and that was his office the son of the morning on account of the revelations of god that he had he built pride and said do you know what if this is all that makes god god then i have the secrets to be god i will exalt myself above the stars of god he said i will be like the most high treason was found in him he wanted to run a parallel government so you can choose either god or him and there was war in heaven now don't downplay the level of lucifer's intelligence even in heaven he deceived one third of the angels wow what would he have told them that made one third of the angels to literally leave their original estate the bible says and there was judgment in heaven michael the archangel you see that they met again over the body of moses you again they met michael said don't waste my time the lord rebuke you so now it was the judgment that came as a result of the fall of lucifer when you read the book of revelations it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for lucifer that great dragon has been cast into the earth he has come with anger and fury that's why uncontrolled anger is the most classic proof that there is a spirit manipulating you yes sir lucifer came down to the earth with anger and he was hovering around the face of the waters it was the judgment of lucifer that led to genesis 1 verse 2 do you understand now so genesis 1 verse 3 is god now bringing light what light this was not sunlight i hope you know sunlight was created in day four this was the light that the life-giving factor of creation he withdrew it in the judgment of lucifer and so now god said light be that's the original hebrew rendition light be and there was light and then he began to create everything and he saw that it was good and so on and so forth and then when we get to genesis chapter 1 verse 26 
this is the first classic expression that proves the triune nature of god and god said let us let us so this was this was a parliament there was a meeting going on not let me let us but this does not automatically tell you whether there are three they could be ten let us so how do we know that it is the father the son and the holy spirit are we learning next scripture very quickly matthew chapter 3 please from verse 14 this is the baptism of jesus now look up please a little background again about jesus i hope you know that jesus came to the earth for many reasons principally to be a mediator to bring many sons into glory are we together he came and as, and as an expression of the love of the father this was revealed through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that whosoever believes in him that report might receive the life of god in the flesh to show us that it was possible to live a victorious life the third reason why he came was to become a marking script a correction over our perceptions about god because until jesus came there were many things about god that people did not know they did not have the rich um opportunity to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit to the degree to which we enjoy he would come upon them and then go away he did not have a permanent residence within them so they credited all kinds of things to god jesus came as god's manual god's reference point so that everything you thought god did or was you looked at the life of jesus to correct your orientation are we together now matthew chapter 3 please thank you jesus is someone learning but john forbade him saying this was jesus at the baptism now i have need to be baptized of thee and thou comest to me and jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he allowed him next verse now watch this and jesus the logos of god john 1 1 remember in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the same was with god so we see two there the word and god the same was with god even though he was god also now the bible says and jesus so we see that jesus was there when he was baptized he went straight out of the water and lo the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of god are you seeing now so this is jesus walking on earth in the flesh the heavens open and the holy spirit descending upon him lightning upon him like a dove 17 and then a voice which is not the holy spirit this is jesus on earth this is the holy spirit coming and another third voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son whoever calls him father what should be his name whoever calls jesus son must be jesus proved that he was father when he called jesus i mean uh, god proved that he was father when he called jesus so jesus the word the spirit of the living god the father one last proof in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established matthew 28 the great commission from verse 18 matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth next verse go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of this is jesus talking now baptizing them in the name of the father of the son of the holy ghost he didn't mention any fourth person so we know from the mouth of jesus that the godhead is trinity jesus himself spoke are you ready for one last proof acts chapter 7 this was the matthias stephen about to be stoned acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please acts chapter 7 don't be tired of learning scripture it gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of god on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have it says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed 
when they heard these things they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth verse 55 now the bible says but he stephen now being full of the holy ghost so who was in stephen the holy spirit he looked steadfastly into heaven what did he see the glory of god and then jesus standing at the right hand so we see the holy spirit in stephen god manifesting in his glory the father and the son standing at his right hand why am i saying this thing so that you will believe from scripture not from opinion not from charismatism from scripture if your confidence is just based on what someone said it would dwindle with time but when your faith is anchored on scripture it becomes unbending you become immovable are we together now now the word spirit comes from the latin word spiritus it means breath spiritus s p i as pneuma all mean the same thing these are expressions of spirit are we together so a spirit typically speaking um generally it just means the life-giving factor of anything the life-giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing 